Steven Crowder has decided to wage a holy war on what he is calling big con or big conservative. Now, I'm sure if you guys are in my sphere at all, you've seen this. You've seen stuff going back and forth on Twitter. You've seen the videos. Steven made a video, said that he was offered or at least the negotiations were to start with a non-binding terms agreement that he didn't like. The Daily Wire came out and said, oh, we're the ones that offered it. Steven Crowder came out, did a video, had a phone call that he recorded and so on and so forth. And the one thing that I would love to tell everybody is this is nothing new under the sun. In fact, if you have been a part of or been a conservative or libertarian for many years like I have, you would recognize this. I have been paying attention to politics since I was about 16 years old. In fact, I can tell you the thing that got me into the political world was seeing Toby Keith on the Glenn Beck program when he was on Fox News. So however long ago that was, I can't remember. I think it was Toby Keith's first appearance. I can't remember if he did anything other than that one appearance. And me being a musician, I liked country music a lot back then. And so that was really cool for me. So just a little bit of my background there. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I have said for years is you put 100 libertarians in a room and I'll show you 100 different forms of libertarianism, right? And the reason that this exists is because people exist, right? Everybody wants to call it out on the left side of the aisle, but nobody calls it out on the conservative side of the aisle, generally because it tends to be more of a tame thing, right? And conservatives are more likely and libertarians are more likely to uh, agree and they don't agree to disagree. They basically say, no, you're wrong, but we can move on and still have a beer anyway. And that's why it doesn't seem as volatile. However, this last week, everyone is treating this Steve even Crowder thing uh, with the Daily Wire as if it's something new, as if this is going to tear apart the movement. Uh, lest you guys forget when Glenn Beck actually left Fox News and the things that he was saying about Fox News for many years afterwards, right? But it, but again, none of that ever seemed to boil over to this right now. I think this also speaks to the culture that we're in because back in those days, the social media presence and the rage bait on the internet didn't didn't seem to have the prolific presence in our society, our culture, and our way of thinking the way that it does now. Now, one of the things that people need to understand about this is everybody who believes in freedom and limited or no government is all running in the same direction with each other right now, right? It's a marathon. All of us are running with each other. We're all supporting each other. We're all handing each other the bottles of waters to make sure that we can keep running the race. However, when it comes to freedom-minded people, many people have a different level of government that they would like to have. This is why I say put a hundred libertarians in a room, you get a hundred different forms of libertarianism, right? I can run in the same direction as an anarchist, but I know that my finish line and where I would essentially like government to be, which would be very, very small, very limited, and more in the community versus in the federal powers, that's kind of my stopping point, and that would take way too long to elaborate, and possibly uh, I would have to have a larger discussion about that, maybe in a live stream in the future if you guys are interested. But when I stop and say, no, I'm good here with my version of government, the anarchists are going to keep running and saying, no, your government is too much. And at that point, we become at odds with each other. Right, right now, we might be friendly. Now, what you're seeing is essentially that, but with two heavy hitters in the conservative movement. Now, for many years, I have not necessarily been a fan of Steven Crowder. I kind of find the guy annoying in his show. I just, it's not my style. I did like his Change My Mind segments, but not necessarily something that I would want to keep watching. After you hear the arguments so many times, you just kind of get burned out. Now, when it comes to the Daily Wire, there are some things that have put me off of them, specifically the Sunday, uh, the the Sunday show that Ben Shapiro did with, you know, the God King Jeremy Boring, as they call him. And something that bothered me in that one was when Jeremy Boring said, "Well, he was in Hollywood and he met with the director to produce a movie, and the director basically came out and said that he absolutely does, you know." Uh, terrible things uh, to get women to sleep with them in order to give them contracts because they want power. And Jeremy Boring is like, oh, but I'm not going to name any names because I still want to work in the industry. 
right? That kind of set me off, and that's always kind of soured my opinion of the Daily Wire. After that, um, one of the people that's on Daily Wire, Andrew Clavin, I still love to this day. I don't watch a lot of his stuff, but I checked his stuff out back when he was on PJTV doing his shorts. Uh, Just shut up was one of my favorite ones. I absolutely think Andrew Clavin owns the shorts, and the guy, if he decided to return to that format, would become a god on the internet with the way that he can do his short videos. Does this hurt the conservative or libertarian movement? Not in the slightest. Not in any way. Because these are the things that conservatives and libertarians have been arguing about for years. For instance, I have argued for years with people who are diehard Trump guys, diehard MAGA people. I voted for Trump twice, and yet I still argue there was a lot of damage that Trump did to the country. People don't like to hear that. Again, we start getting into the no true Scotsman thing, especially when it comes to libertarians. Now, the reason we don't talk about it as much as we do the left is because the left tends to be a lot more vitriolic and a lot more violent when it comes to them saying no true leftist or no true woke person uh, can be this way. It tends to be a lot more quiet and it doesn't tend to boil over like this. Now, a lot of people might say, well, you're just, you're not picking sides or you're just trying to do this milk toast thing that Tim Pool does and not really, to be perfectly honest. Again, what we're seeing right now is what the conservative and libertarian movement has done for years. It just happens to be that instead of two people talking about it, drinking some beers on their back porch about who believes in freedom more, it's a couple of heavy hitters in the media sphere. Now, getting down to it and the crux of the situation, is Steven Crowder justified in thinking that the contracts that are handed out are not good? And they do, especially when you kind of know how the YouTube monetization and the ads work and things like that and how a lot of that stuff works. When is it is it a smart idea or is it right of the Daily Wire to continue to hand out these contracts? I tend to disagree. I think that I definitely agree with Steven Crowder here that those contracts need to go. Okay. When it comes to business, right? I don't like the idea of people saying that they're principled, but still willing to play ball with their enemies. That does not seem like a good idea for conservative voices going forward because eventually they will be silenced. They will be turned and eventually they'll say, hey, we're going to start demonetizing you unless you guys play ball. And if it's all about making money and a source or a not even a large source of the income, but a source of the income happens to be YouTube or Facebook or any of that. And they say, well, OK, well, to, to make money, we'll, we'll keep doing this. That's problematic to me. I don't like that. OK. Now, Stephen Crowder is going to go on Tim Pool tonight and talk about his side of things probably more. And the people who agree with him agree with him. And the people who agree with The Daily Wire agree with The Daily Wire. And to be perfectly honest, I, like I said, I don't watch Stephen Crowder. I watched him for like about a month. Uh, I was subscribed to The Daily Wire up until recently because I just, I don't watch their stuff anymore. The talking points are the same. They're not any different. And I genuinely don't see anything of value with the stage that I'm at in my life. That doesn't mean that these guys don't provide value to other people. But for me, I have my own journey and my own thing that I'm focused on. I do still try to stay tapped into the things that I care about, as such as, you know, such as you know, trying to point out the fact that the world governments are absolutely terrible and they're using big tech companies against the people of the world. I think that's 100% important to talk about. But overall, does this hurt the conservative or libertarian movement? No, it doesn't. Because this has happened before. This has happened before. You've seen arguments between Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity. You've seen arguments between a lot of these people and like Rush Limbaugh. You have seen back and forth. You've seen people calling out companies. You've seen people calling out Fox News for years, right? But they all still tend to play ball with each other, right? 
Because again, you're getting into the no true conservative fallacy. Well, no true conservative, and they all say it, I have said it. And if you're conservative, you've probably said it. And the fact of the matter is, the only reason this is getting as much publicity as it is, is because it's two heavy hitters. So don't think that this is more important than it actually is. Go on, live your life, run in the same direction with me until you feel it's time to jump off. And then at that point, eh, maybe we can start arguing with each other. But honestly, Steven Crowder, Daily Wire, they're running in the same direction with each other. I think it's just the wrong time to pick the fight. Maybe it's not. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below of this video. You say, Why, Royce, you usually don't cover the political side of things. I generally don't. I do like to try to cover more of the cultural side of things, but I've seen a lot of the talk on Twitter, and I've seen a lot of the talk around this, surrounding this, and I thought, you know what? I have paid attention to this stuff for years. It's something that is important to me, and I will talk about it, and I won't shy away from talking about the things that I think are important. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know in the comments below what you think. Are you, Have you ever said no true conservative or no true libertarian? And let me know down below what your thoughts on that are. Do you guys think I'm taking a middle of the road stance or do you guys think I'm just talking about stuff that I've literally seen for a decade and a half at this point? And never forget, I dedicate a special live stream to you on Sundays at 11 a.m. where I go through and I read all of your comments. It's called Sunday Coffee. I would love to see you all there. And hopefully you guys have an absolutely fantastic night. Cheers, everybody. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.